All right, time for another draftphysics.com, debatephysics.com also. But no one will reasonably um, interact regarding the facts of the elemental function of the universe. These are forbidden subjects. Anyway, so yes, more MV squared stuff and this Tom stanton guy okay i think i have emailed him in the past so this may be all quite futile uh but what the hell i mean there's just not much else you can do but to uh, start begging and pleading please 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 mr scientist please um so anyway he's got a very interesting channel does lots of these um you know um let's say op you know sort of an efficiency thing like okay here's a something engineered let's try to make it work better or work different or use a different kind of fuel or some kind of stuff like that and so his last video i'm not too pleased with the title i mean this car travels further than you push it it really doesn't okay i mean it it doesn't you have to store energy in the little capacitor ahead of time or it doesn't do anything more and um so, you know, sort of clickbait, blah, 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 but whatever. Um, but lots of interesting stuff. Um, you know, uh, he has a, a, you know, an aluminum traviche, you know, shooting tennis balls and all that kind of stuff. And he doesn't take it too far. I mean, he does try to destroy things in the end, you know, push them to the maximum and all of that crap. So he does have whatever um, failure porn and uh, blow stuff up porn in the videos, but whatever. Um, it's very interesting engineering. So enough of that crap, I guess. Okay, so he's a astrophysicist, uh, astro engineer. Uh, I should get that right, right? Aerospace engineer. Okay, and um, so uh, you know, should be able to <laughs> to help if he is so inclined all right so i'll explain the dilemma so the point is is that i've watched a few of his videos he talks about kinetic energy all the time he even gives you joule numbers so he launched some tennis balls and he told us how many joules of energy they have and um you know so he's part of the believers okay <laughs> he's one of the believers in one half mv squared he thinks there's some reason i should understand that this is a real function of the universe that somehow velocity makes a big difference and mass doesn't make much difference at all uh somehow they're disproportionately influencing how much energy something has it's not about momentum it's about this kinetic energy one half mv squared thing all right now my sincere statement to you tom is that i can't find any evidence really proving it i mean besides little rickety carts made for the purpose of pushing them back and forth or a little air track kind of flunky let's stick some clay on it to make it work kind of experiments there's no car crash kind of experiments there's nothing on any kind of scale that would indicate any of this is real so there's just no evidence that uh, five-ton trains going 10 miles an hour will beat a 10-ton train going five miles an hour in a tug of war. There's just no evidence that that happens. The five-ton train wins because it has twice as much energy. Um, that kind of thing. All of that evidence is non-existent. And you can even go all the way back 350 years to... Gotterfeld Leibniz um, contention, all right, that four pounds dropped one foot is the same energy as one pound dropped four feet. And never has anybody demonstrated that to be an actual fact. Um, the only place you could see a little bit of confusion is the Joule experiments, where he changes how long it takes for something to fall, but assumes that it's the same energy as free fall. So if I lower something slowly it's somehow the same amount of energy even though i'm collecting a hell of a lot more gravity um so you know that creates a little bit of confusion but i think a scientist should be able to figure out that yes if i'm making it fall slower it means it must be getting hit with more gravity essentially because it's in the gravity longer falling and therefore it must be per second per second it by <laughs> per second it must be collecting more gravity because it's in the gravity more seconds. 
Um, but anyway, uh, but otherwise, you know, there's just no hard evidence of any of this stuff. There's no physical car crash kind of evidence. Now, the only thing I have seen is a Mythbusters, you know, they crash a car into a steel wall at 50 miles an hour, and then they crash the same car into a steel wall, same make, uh, at 100 miles an hour, and the car crashes exactly twice as much. So, you know, no evidence there, you know, that um, the 100 mile an hour crash did four times the amount of energy was imposed on the metal, um, just twice as much. All right, and then the three numbers get even more interesting. So uh, we have done many videos on creating a a clean experiment where you know you use a Newton's cradle for example you know and the simple kinetic energy argument is is that okay I do this okay all right and just one thing pops out same energy goes in okay so if this had 100 energies 100 energies come out the other side then 100 energies go back there and you have a nice little oscillator and the theory is is that if I glue these three things together that now I'll put 100 in and I'll get 150 out. The three will come off with 150 and the other one will go back with 50. And now I have a total of 200 momentums, movement in the universe. And then when they come back together again, somehow the 150 momentum plus the 50 momentum will equal just 100 popping back out. So 200 into the crash and I only get 100 back out. Now I'd argue that that's not possible. Um, you know, just on its face to me, it can't make any sense. So until somebody shows me it happening, I ain't going to believe it because I'm a reasonable person. And, uh, you know, I want the truth. You know, I don't want fables and stories. We've already, you know, mankind has already had enough of that crap. So, um, you know, I can't make this any more sincere. This is the honest circumstance. So I'll explain a little more detail about the kind of experiment we should be able to uh, somewhere in the annals of the history of physics this experiment should be documented somewhere where we have absolute proof all right that this kinetic energy thing actually happens that there's any such thing now I'd argue all the space experiments ruin it because there's no possibility you know that you can do anything but use momentum out of your spaceship to move it you know, it's about how much, you know, if I throw the, the, the dime going a thousand miles an hour out one side of my ship and the two liters of Coke out the other side of my ship going one mile an hour, I'm not going to turn. Even though there's a thousand times more kinetic energy going out one side than the other side, momentum's going to control. And I think you, aerospace engineer, you must know this. You must know that momentum only works in space momentum moves things in space the kinetic energy thing just won't work it won't work shooting lighter things faster in space that won't help you any it's about the bulk momentum I mean, you gotta know you gotta know that uh, yeah well anyway all right so let me just do the drawing thing and uh again you know i don't know I mean, I've been doing this for years, so you might understand I have a little bit of frustration that absolutely no one, no scientist will respond. They will not take on the subject. They won't go anywhere near it. And it's very frustrating that we're supposed to believe something and the scientists won't do what is elemental to what their scientific function is, which is show me the evidence. Show me the, the, show me it to be a fact. Don't tell me it's a fact. Show me it's a fact. All right. So, <clears throat> this is the diagram, I guess I would say, of the experiment I am seeking. I would say we are seeking. There's a few people interested in this subject. would love to see hard evidence produced, too, so they could keep convincing the children that it's true. I mean, they'd all love to be able to just point to the empirical proven evidence that yes it does happen this way so this is basically the Leibniz thing in a different version all right we're saying okay we're just going to give things velocities and momentums and kinetic energies and say let's do the experiment let's actually see what happens so the idea would be is you'd have the same experiment one mass crashing into a one mass going three times the speed and a three mass okay going one unit of velocity 
those two crashes and you're just comparing them now they have exactly the same momentum all right but the kinetic energy would be three times greater in this crash than in this crash and the idea is is well we should be able to put something inside here okay clay or whatever some kind of some some sort of like an electrical plunger you know that collects the electricity a coil and a magnet you know some way to detect exactly how much energy it actually is producing and ha and to make a record of it prove that it actually happens that this has the potential the capacity to create three times the energy that this will create and do it in some way that doesn't contain any flaws now as an aerospace engineer you probably know there's lots of little subtle tiny variables that'll control things i mean tiny little defects in a propeller tiny little insect centuries will destroy an experiment um but i mean the basic idea is this simple lever idea right i mean i i have a balance i mean i've done this i mean you can balance these two things all right you know if you you know balance it from the top and it'll oscillate perfectly, okay? The two mass will go one distance, the one mass will go two distances, twice the velocity in the same amount of time, equal. I, if I drop this at twice the velocity, okay, I'll get this at one V. And if I drop this at one velocity, I'll get this with two V. I mean, a di ideal lever anyway. That's the expectation. Now, obviously I can't make free energy, so this would always have two X, the energy, okay? And I've only got one energies over here i mean so that obviously doesn't make any sense that would be free energy so it really has to work i mean the momentum has to be conserved so that's the simple thing that's telling me this mv thing this <laughs> one half mv squared thing can't possibly be true because it, the lever demonstrates that it can't be true because you have to conserve the momentum i can't possibly put 100 in here and get 200 out here i mean what no if that ain't gonna work um if that could happen then all of us would have free energy machines so why is it even a conversation and again we could just another version of this would just do be to do the the you know bang the one mess <laughs> let's see i guess i should just uh, erase this bottom part all right, just do the, uh, um, you know, we already know this is what happened. Take a 5 mass, okay, um, going 10V, all right, and combine it. Just add another 5 mass to it uh, gracefully. You know, and if you use gravity, I mean, you're obviously using energy to combine the two objects. So you're not stealing any of this energy because you're adding energy to combine them, which is really convenient. And you end up with a, a 10 mass, okay, going 5V. All right, that's all. And so obviously you've lost half the kinetic energy, right? So you have 2X the kinetic energy here. You only have 1X the kinetic energy on the outcome. But the momentum is perfectly conserved. And so I'm supposed to reasonably believe that somehow you lost half the energy. That is, you know, half the energy flew off in some way or, you know, created heat or did some kind of bizarre crap, made a huge amount of sounds or did something crazy. But I didn't use any momentum to make the heat and I didn't make any, use any momentum to shoot pieces off and I didn't use any momentum to make the sparks. That somehow I keep all of my momentum and yet I destroy a whole bunch of stuff or bend it or dent it or deform it. Well, I can't do any of those things and not use the momentum. You see the argument, right? So this can't, this, this, it just can't be true. I mean, I'm sitting here saying, okay, I mean, there's no evidence in 350 years you haven't got one scientific paper proving the existence of this kinetic energy stuff. It just, there's nothing. All right, unless you want to talk about subatomic particles or something, and that's far from a proof. Um... No experiment where you extract the heat or any of that stuff. Now, again, the Joule experiments confused the subject a little bit because Joule was making the assumption that free-falling, okay, dropping something in one second or two seconds, let's say, and then dropping it in ten seconds, okay, is somehow the same amount of energy went into the object when I would obviously argue, no, it's 9.8 meters of velocity per second, and so ten seconds is nine times ten, uh, 9.8 times 10. Okay, it's a lot more energy if you're going to restrict its capacity to fall, then you're going to have to 
absorb the weight and okay that's going to make more and more energy so the slower you lift something the more work you do the slower you drop something the more work you do all right but anyway so let's not talk about jewel those aren't proofs those aren't car crashes those aren't levers you know those aren't hydraulics i mean hydraulic systems is there any real option for this disappearing momentum so the, you know the ballistic pendulum is just another way to throw in there i mean it's the same thing as this argument here but let's just do it just to you know, make the point again that magically all right so i shoot the bullet into the ballistic pendulum i perfectly conserve the momentum let's say okay let's this oh, perfect is too much to say in that case so you get 98 98 percent okay of the momentum is conserved so you have a certain momentum here and you conserve 98 percent of it in the linear motion of the big heavy pendulum yet you lost 99 okay in the professor lewin case 0.94 percent of the kinetic energy is gone so you start with say whatever 2000 here and you only have three okay so, so you start with 2000 you only have three you 2000 joules now you only have three joules uh, that's believable and then if you were going to say well there's a the clay got incredibly hot and all kinds of crap happened and all kinds of energies escaping well then again you're back to the argument well how can i conserve 98 percent of the momentum if i made all that heat and if i made the clay go in all kinds of directions and it shot out of here and it did all kinds of weird shit if all that happened wouldn't i have to use the momentum can i make bowling pins fly off of a bowling ball without the bowling ball having less momentum after the impact i would argue of course not so you must understand the dilemma here i mean you have no I, science provides me no physical evidence i don't have any proof that any of this crap happens and i'm supposed to believe it okay and you just keep saying it you keep telling me it's the truth telling me it's the truth science is the most proven theory in the history of mankind we've proven it all uh proof 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 and there's nothing there's no evidence there's no experimental evidence so please could you really do a precise experiment and actually show us the extra kinetic energy show us where it is in the ballistic pendulum show us the 2000 missing jewels where are they or, or show us this crash here where i have three times the energy here with these little fluffy objects uh that i have here show show us some example of this kinetic energy really being collected it actually doing actual work in the universe some example of an actual experiment where you actually collect the claimed kinetic energy show me the bullet moving 2000 times more pieces of matter than the gun recoil so that's my plea so we'll see if we can get some kind of response i mean something please help please please help help it's from a movie <laughs> yeah. oh i just <laughs> please <laughs> just, oh it's just, it's just so so funny hundreds of years of science and i have to make this video i mean it, i shouldn't have to make this video I, I mean, I shouldn't have to say, oh, well, come on, you can provide a, one single piece of evidence. This isn't like Jesus walking on water or something, right? I'm not asking you to show me the miracle. I'm just asking you to show me a footprint of Jesus. You know, let me just see his, his sandal print somewhere in the ground. Some kind of little something more than, uh, you know, silly little banging carts with metal wheels into each other or some other stuff. It's kind of stupid experiment, <laughs> you know, where half the energy is in angular momentum that you can't see. Uh, yeah, I don't even want to have to go through all the, all the bad examples of these experiments done. I want to see something real, something a reasonable person cannot deny as evidence. That's this should be the standard, shouldn't it? Shouldn't that be the standard? 
beyond a reasonable doubt? And have they produced, has science realistically produced a single shred of evidence for me to believe without reasonable doubt that four pounds dropped one foot is the same energy, impact energy, as one pound dropped four feet? I mean, the one pound dropped four feet, you understand, right? I mean, I know you people say gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared, but, you know, it's obviously not. It's per second per one second. It's 9.8 meters per second per one second. Not any squared seconds. I mean, I don't know. I mean, if I, you know, I have to explain, you know, if you have to, you know, you're almost saying, how could an astrophysicist not know that gravity is a time-dependent force? I mean, it's just, you're saying, no, there's no way he actually believes that you got four units of gravity because you dropped it four units of distance it got four units of gravity because it was in the gravity four seconds when no it's only in the gravity two seconds two units of time I, 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 I shouldn't have to explain that to an astrophysicist no. alright anyway <laughs> so let's see, see what happens uh, like I said I, I yeah years i have to do this for years and i can't get one single one of these science presenters and it's sort of what they are um to take on the the hard difficult challenge of actually doing a kinetic energy experiment and actually showing us how magically powerful light things are going fast <laughs> you know, and how magically unpowerful heavy things going slow are. Wrecking balls are so freaking lame. They, they can't do any work at all. But the speeding bullet, oh yeah, you can knock down Empire State Buildings with that. All right, anyway. I'm just so, it's just so depressing. Ugh, I hate this planet. I really do. But anyway, Tom, please, please, please. Please, save the day. Please. Show us. Prove it. <laughs> you know, if you're going to say the words kinetic energy, just make sure you can show us some of this stuff really happening. Some of this magic kinetic energy fluid. Alright, anyway. Till the next time and such and so forth and whatnot. Oh, add on. Uh, yeah, yeah, I forgot the important part. I'll pay you, Tom. Tom, really, really, I'll pay you, okay? If you find the subject uninteresting and you really hate this whole idea of, oh, let's not do elemental science, let's just play with the toys, um, I'll pay you to do it, okay? So just tell me what I have to pay you to actually do a really good kinetic energy experiment. I mean, the kind of experiment that could be written up as a paper because it's so clean, okay? I mean, nobody could come up with any objections about what you're using to measure and how you measured it and any of that stuff. So, I mean, I'll pay you, or I'll pay you just for your time, just to, just as to link to uh, real evidence, like some experiment that really is already exists that's this great piece of evidence that uh, this MV squared thing is real. Just any hard, visual, grokkable, grabbable evidence, you know, that's just beyond a reasonable doubt. I'll pay you for that link. So just name your price. Name what I have to pay you to engage in this conversation about the merits of one half MV squared. I don't know if you want to research the history, but it's ugly. It's such an ugly history. Uh, the living force, it was called. Um, you know, and it's completely anti-Newtonian physics. So they keep trying to smear Newton with this F equals M A kind of crap, and, you know, as if that means one half m b squared. And it's not Newton's physics at all. Okay, I mean Newton said twice the force, twice the velocity. Three times the force, three times the velocity. That's Newton's physics, not nine times. I mean, real. I mean, look. The the real question is, can you produce a piece of evidence showing that something it takes twenty five times the energy to move something five times as fast, or one hundred times one hundred units of energy to move something ten times as fast? Can any of that possibly be defended with any experimental evidence? 
but I'll pay you to engage in the subject. Just name the price and I'll raise the money.